This here is the Geekom A5 Mini PC. This computer with its Ryzen 7 processor will be great for Windows tasks, music production and some games. In today's video, we'll find the limits, as well as push the upper tier of emulation action. Is the Geekom A5 fast enough? Or will it just be nice to look at? Welcome to T Pandora. Subscribe! This package here came from Geekom. In purpose of video review. No cash has been sent, and all thoughts and opinions of this product are our own. And here's the box. To be fair, this is a very clean design, and this somehow reminds me of a box for a power supply. And on the back we got the sticker with the specs. This one's got a 5A100H, 32GB of RAM, and 512GB of NVMe. Open Sesame. Here's the mini PC, and first impressions, very nice. Let's check out the rest of the box. So under here we have the uh, thank you card. Let's see what it says. I'll let you up. Geekcam was founded in 2003. Oh, uh, whatever. Dear customer, yeah. Some more things under here, including a HDMI cable. It's around one and a half meters long, and it feels a bit thinner than the competition. In this bag we got some screws, a power cable, and what's interesting about this one is we have an earth pin. It'll be safer than the regular 2-pin, but it's not very common in the Japanese home. Here's the power adapter, and has a reasonable weight to it, with a maximum output of 120 watts, at 19 volts, 6.32 amps, and uses a barrel jack. You have a manual, and this one folds out to quite a large size. With all these images, it's very easy to understand, and it covers 10 languages. And finally, we have the VESA mount. With the bag of screws we had earlier, we can use this to attach our mini PC to the wall or the back of a monitor. Let's take a close look at the mini PC. To protect it from scratches, it has this plastic cover, which we'll need to remove. And yeah, this looks beautiful. The color is of lightish pink or purple, maybe Sakura, and at 560 grams at this size, it feels very solid. On the top, it's pretty clean. It's got the Geekom logo. Then moving to the front, we've got two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. The one on the left has power delivery. There's a three and a half mil audio jack and the power switch. On the right hand side, we have air intake holes and a Kensington lock. Kensington. Moving to the back now, we have the air exhaust holes, DC input for the power, USB-C, which according to the manual is USB-1 with DisplayPort, HDMI, LAN Ethernet, which is rated for 2.5 gigs, USB 3.2 Gem 2, USB 2.0, another one of them USB-C ports, and HDMI. Doesn't say which version of HDMI it is, but we'll find out soon enough. Outside here, we've got an SD card slot, and on the underneath, oops, we've got a sticker and a few screws. We'll check inside further on in the video, but it's nice to see that the feet raise it slightly away from the surface, which can aid in cooling. This computer has the Ryzen 7 5800H. With 8 cores and 16 threads, this CPU is no slouch. And as it is a few generations old, it uses the Vega 8 GPU and DDR4. Windows 11 Pro is pre-installed, and we have a variety of storage options. Unfortunately, we only have up to HDMI 2.0, so 144Hz 4K is not on the table. Time for the size comparison. The Geekom A5 is a bit bigger than the ZX01, and it's slightly smaller than the GMK Tech M5. If you have none of these, here's a Nintendo Game Boy. Or how about the much more recent Nintendo Switch? It's much larger than a piece of chocolate. Look at that, tiny. Here's a Satsuma. A banana. And finally, a Roy Bosch tea bag. I am going to get a cup of tea with Beverly. When used with a monitor, speaker, keyboard, and mouse, we can get cracking. When we turn it on, we're greeted with the Geekom boot screen, and that's followed by some questions for Windows 11. We need to select language, and then we're asked for our Wi Fi details. We're unsure if Microsoft is pushing this upon manufacturers, but we see this as a huge red flag especially in the wake of Ace Magic releasing a mini PC with malware installed. As we couldn't check this before inputting credentials, we made a new Microsoft account just in case. But if you want to be certain of no malware, you need to install an OS from scratch. As soon as we're into Windows, it is super snappy. All of the system specs check out, and Windows 11 Pro is fully activated. Windows updates do work, and thankfully, no malware was detected. Now we can download the latest AMD drivers, and the updated and installed no problem and we could use Ninite to install some free tools. Using software such as LibreOffice, no issues whatsoever. This computer flies, it's buttery smooth. And check out my face. This is a great little computer for 2D graphics. 
or even audio production. Here's Apple Studio with I'm Awake, and it works great, from around 20 to 30% CPU usage. Of course, you can do things like internet shopping, maybe get a quick present for the girlfriend. But moving to streaming video, apparently we only have HDCP 1.0. This questionable form of DRM may affect some, but we managed to get 1080p HD video from Amazon Prime. Here's Netflix. And some 4K YouTube. It's not using the AV1 codec, but it's working very well. Connecting our 8-bit Doe controller via Bluetooth was straightforward, and we could finally check out a game. And is Among Us, 4K, at a full speed. Before we get into the game testing, we should check out benchmarks. And we've got some fairly decent speeds from our NVMe. Checking out the Geekbench 6, the CPU scores are actually not too bad compared to the higher-ups we've already tested. And the major difference is the speed of the GPU, and this shows in TimeSpy, where the 5800H is close in speed to the Intel i7-12650H. And here's a Cinnabon. Anyway. Time for the games. 2D titles such as Among Us and Streets of Rage 4 will run extremely well, and as you saw earlier, there'll be no problem in playing these games in 4K at full speed. Rocket League here at 1080p, very high quality, and we're just below 60fps. It's certainly very playable, but if you want to go over 60 FPS, you can simply lower the settings. Moving on to Metal Gear Solid Fortnite Edition. At 1080p performance renderer mode, it can get a little slow while jumping off the bus. But as soon as you land it, we're at around 60 to 100 FPS. Here's Dota 2, with graphical options maxed out in 1080p. While Counter-Strike 2 in medium settings is very playable, we won't be getting the required FPS required for competitive gaming. Cyberpunk in 1080p delivers a lackluster 22 FPS. Bumping down the resolution can increase that somewhat, but at 37 FPS, we're seeing the limits of this machine. But that's not to say that newer games can't be played. Tekken 8 here, 1080p, low settings. Now some power world. I wanna be the very best. <laughs> when it comes to emulation, the Geekom A5 Mini PC runs PlayStation 3 games quite well. Here's Ridge Racer 7 running at full speed with minor dips when using an external camera. And here's some Wipeout Fury HD. Moving on to the PS Vita, this chipset manages to run it far better than the 5700U. If you're wanting a PC to emulate this system, the 5800H is definitely a great entry point.
Most were lucky to even have their bones exit the ruins. You don't currently belong to the guild. I recommend registering. It's a Wii U, and it performs at full speed provided it's not compiling any shaders. Once they're done, full speed ahead. And it's Tekken Tag 2 Wii U edition, and it's playing rather well. Nintendo Switch now, Mario Odyssey is running quite well, however there are some frame dips in various areas. So now we know the capabilities, let's take a look inside. There are four screws underneath, but they act a bit like those childproof medicine caps. Either way, it's quite easy to open up, but if you do this, be aware as a cable is attached to the bottom of the case. Ooh. There's a 7mm, 2.5 inch drive bay at the bottom, with a full SATA connection. It has a reliable Lexar NM6A1 NVMe, so we don't need to worry about corrupted data. A spare slot in the center for an M2 2242 SATA SSD. And for memory, we have two sticks of Wooposit PC4 3200. If we take a peek under the NVMe, we can see the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth adapter, which is a Realtek 8852BE. And taking a look underneath the memory, there's nothing really of importance. But what we can do is add a 2.5 inch SSD. It doesn't need any screws, you just need to poke these out, pop the drive in, and then poke them back in again. Once in, we'll close up the case. Then we're good to go. This one has a huge amount of options available to fiddle around with. As far as we can see, there is no way to change the TDP, but there are fan policies. Outside that, we can enable secure boot if needed, and we can also load up the Batasera Linux operating system that was installed onto the 2.5 inch SSD, giving us a dual boot Windows with a retro gaming beast. This is Batasera 38, and the onboard Wi-Fi worked flawlessly. However, when we tried to use Bluetooth, we couldn't connect at all, so if you need to use a controller, either wired or a USB dongle will be needed. Batacera Linux is a great way to turn your computer into a little gaming console. So now our little computer can run a variety of systems such as the Commodore Amiga at full speed. Or Neo Geo. Sega Saturn. Sega Dreamcast. Sega Naomi. Or even full on Sega Model 3 arcade emulation. At idle, this computer is fairly quiet and draws around 6 watts from the wall. Then on the load, it can get a bit noisy. And it pulls around 60 watts. It's about time for the pros and the cons. The Geekom A5 is a very pretty computer. It stays cool, has quality NVMe, and has a multiple of storage options. This all combined gives us a very good value mini PC. However, we cannot agree with the requirement to enter network and account details before it's possible to scan your computer for malware. It's a dangerous practice and we really hope this isn't being pushed by Microsoft. Outside that, the computer is noisy on the load and HDMI is limited to 100Hz in ultra-wide 1440p. Is this computer fast enough? As long as you're not playing AAA games, sure. But can we recommend this unit? Only with an asterisk. Hopefully in the future, Geekom can remove this requirement, as right now, cheap mini PCs are under the microscope. If you think we were too harsh on the aspect regarding the operating system, we'd love to hear what you think in the comments section. We have a few more computers to look at in the next few weeks, and if you want to keep up to date, please subscribe, and clicking that like button would go a long way. If you want to help support our work, we've got a Patreon, and we also have some more videos like these ones here. This has been the Chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra!